Welcome to the Buffalo Bulls Dynasty, everybody. There are only two games remaining on the schedule, which means only two more chances to get us above the three wins we had a season ago. We want to be a one-star team again, so we have more hours to recruit each week. I imagine we have to win at least one more game to get there. And one player I want to spotlight is wide receiver Austin Harris, who had his coming out party last episode. He's a deep threat who can go up and get the football, and it really brought an element to the offense we were missing. I think that's something we have to add into the offense, which I know scares many of you, I understand that. But we're going to see Austin Harris, Kevin Kajust, and other freshmen get a chance to show what they can do as we think about season three and how we try to take this team from where they are now to a much better position. The run game has not really worked to play in this year and I feel like we're just now starting to kind of play offense at a higher clip. But the season's almost done. We're not gonna be able to get the six wins to be bowl eligible. So not every goal is gonna be accomplished this year. I think our recruiting class though is showing promise. This week, I hope we can get Graham Tangelo. The concern, though, is that he visits UConn, and this battle is extremely close. We also have a couple players such as Sean Prochet that are very close to a commitment in less competitive battles, so we should still see at least a couple more three stars join the class. Today, we take on Central Michigan, a team that... Hasn't played well the last couple weeks since losing their starting quarterback. They come into this game with a 5-5 five five record, but just got blown out a week ago against Ball State, a team that we were able to defeat not that long ago. We know we have to contain their playmakers, which is the focus of this roster. Their best two players are at running back and receiver, but Joe Labis has struggled in his first two starts this season and there's a special challenge in store for today's game that could make things really interesting because for the first time in this series the snow is falling in the buffalo dynasty we've broken out the blackout uniforms for the first time as well i really like this set but now we're gonna have to see how this team plays in the elements the snow does have an impact on quarterbacks, and the visibility is definitely something that takes a little bit of getting used to. But well, let's get this game underway. It's game 11, Bulls and Central Michigan. And it's the Chippewas starting at the 24-yard line. Quarterback Joe Lavis, third straight start for Central Michigan. They go with a run and not much. On the carry, it's Nolan Ziegler who makes the tackle. Remember, he transferred from Central Michigan to Buffalo, and the day's going to open with a three and out. Whenever I see bad weather games like this, the first thing I want to see is how well you can run the football. And the day is going to start with a throw from Gunnar Gray as he hooks up with Chance Morrow on the slant. Single high look, and now a screen to the outside. They go Austin Harris's way, and he gains two, making it third down. Two receivers to the right side. Hand off to Lamar Sperling, and he gets five. And we'll see how much of the running game the Bulls count on today. Another screen upfield. It's Sperling. Safe short throws to open the day. You never know how these quarterbacks are going to be affected by the snow. But now first down, and Gray's going to take a shot downfield and going up to get it. That is Austin Harris. He does it again. Touchdown, Buffalo. Would he be just a one-week wonder? It doesn't appear so. Again, getting a step on the defense and making the big play. Central Michigan football, and they run successfully. And that is Tyler DeWitt. Lavis with three receivers on the field and fakes to DeWitt. Has excellent protection and now he's gonna take a shot downfield and that one is caught as well. Both teams hit a big play. That's Decorian Temple for 53. 
Central Michigan, third down, and with good coverage, he gets rid of it. And here is the field goal team from right hash, and it's just inside, and makes it a 7-3 ball game. So already another exciting Austin Harris moment, and now Gray loses the ball. He was swarmed by three or four defenders on that play. A three and out for Buffalo as the Chippewas take over. And DeWitt picks up a few on this play. Buffalo continuing to bring the safety down. And in this case, it's not going to matter. DeWitt shrugging off tacklers as he gets the first down. 40 yards on seven carries. They'll go right back to him. And he's got blocking in the second level. We've seen far too many games like this play out. Now second down, and the pass is complete, going over the middle to Chris Parker. Inside the 10, looks like Labis is going to keep and not be able to go anywhere on the play. He gets drilled, sets up third and goal. And a draw play, there's room to run, and DeWitt's going to get in. Relying on the element of surprise here on third and goal. And Central Michigan has taken the lead. Buffalo taking over. Press coverage shown here by Central Michigan. And over the middle, it's complete to Kevin Kajust. I'm expecting his role to really grow in year three as Dingle's going to carry and get the first down. Buffalo counting on three different freshmen today at skill positions as Kajust makes the grab for the second time. And now needing about five. Gray over the middle, and Harris cannot hold on to it. And that's going to give it back to Central Michigan. At their own 27 to start this drive. Labis is hit and coughs up the ball. And the Bulls have recovered. Junior Poiser knocked it out. He's made some splash plays lately and big for this defense to force a turnover deep in opposing territory. Really refreshing to see that. You gotta capitalize now that you got the short field and from the 20, this one's dumped off. That's Kevin Kajust inside the 10 and spun out around the three. A lot of usage early on for Kajust as Harris motions and the screen goes his way, but there's a flag down and it's against Kevin Kajust now for a hold and knocks him back outside the 10 yard line. Gray lofting towards McMillan, but it's broken up. Had the single coverage, but now third and goal from the 12 with a four-man rush and great coverage. Gray's gonna put it up for Harris and he can't make the catch. And the Bulls are just gonna have to take their points here. But there you see a couple one-on-one -on -one opportunities. We're gonna take those chances and see if it can be something that works for us. 10 apiece now. Central Michigan running it and cutting outside. DeWitt in the open field across the 50 and reaches 100 yards already. This is a defense that's given up a couple 200-yard performances this year. Labis slings this pass off the mark. Had a receiver, but a difficult throw to attempt here in the snow. Another run for DeWitt, and this time Ziegler, right place, right time. Third and long for Central Michigan. Dropping seven, pass is caught. Just enough time to deliver that ball to a wide open receiver. Making their way to the Buffalo 29. Off the fake, Labis on target. A catch and run for six. Central Michigan back in front as they beat the Buffalo Blitz for a big 29 yard score. Four and change to go for Buffalo as they try to answer. It's a screen set up for Lamar Sperling, and he's got the first down yardage. A lot of screens from this Buffalo offense. Gray now 9 of 13 passing. And now they run it inside, and through a lane is Leon Dingle. He gets six. Sperling checks back into the game on second down as the pass into traffic is incomplete. 
Harris has not done a great job coming across the middle. Brings up third down, and now Gray is off the mark. And he had Quinton Pollard all by himself. Big missed chance, and now they're giving Central Michigan the opportunity to raise this lead. That's a good catch on the slant. Over 100 yards now for Joe Lavis. Second down and five. That is grabbed for a first down in Buffalo territory by Davis. From the 42, again checked down, but rallying. They can't bring him down until he gets the first down. Really sloppy defense again in this first half for Buffalo. Third and 10. And that is off the mark and was very well covered on the play. Both defenses have caught some breaks with these third down misses. So another drive for Buffalo. A minute on the clock and Gray gets the pass off but can't hook up with Kevin Kajust. Got to get 10 here. Gray firing. It's high for Harris and broken up again. Excellent coverage. Kesey boots this one away with about 50 seconds on the clock. And another opportunity is here for Central Michigan. 48 seconds at R47. On first down. Off the mark to an open receiver. So many missed throws today. Brings up second down and 10 from the pocket. This time it's off the hands of a receiver. That's one you expect him to come down with. And again, third down Central Michigan. That's caught, but well shy of the marker. And I can't see him going for it here. It's probably a lot higher scoring first half if not for the weather today. 17-10, a punt that'll bounce out at the two. How about that kick? Backed up here, they can just try to sneak it ahead and take us to the second half. So far, Central Michigan definitely outrunning Buffalo. Both quarterbacks have had missed chances, but also have hit about the same amount of big plays through the air at the same time. On to the second half, and Gunner Gray out of the shotgun. Second and long is going to hand a Sperling, and he's got nowhere to go. Too many tough third downs today for Buffalo. They need 10, and Kajust can't hold on to it. Good field position, Central Michigan. Play fake and trying to push the ball upfield. That hit the receiver in the hand, incomplete. Third and nine, Labis pressured off his spot, and he's intercepted! And it's Nolan Ziegler headed the other way to the 10 and taken out inside the five. He came to Buffalo from Central Michigan in the offseason, and he's made the biggest defensive play against his former team. Just a little off the mark. And he pays for it. Nolan Ziegler, three interceptions this year. And Eric Pacheco is on the field. And Pacheco fakes. Going to run to the outside and get the touchdown. Buffalo with two big plays have tied this game up at 17. It's been another good one this week. Tied in the third quarter, going underneath now. A good catch and run. Not far to go on third down as they run it with DeWitt and easily get the conversion. 122 yards. It has slowed down since the first couple drives and a good run here, but it's going to be coming back with a hold on Central Michigan. First and 18. Here's pressure, and Labis, he's going down, losing the ball, and they'll keep it. But he is sacked by Jamichael Humphreys, our top prospect from a year ago, a three-star pass rusher. This was his first play of the day that he's been on the field, and he just forced the fumble. Riser Presley was the first to hit Labis. It's second and 38. He throws it at the cleats of a receiver. 
So Central Michigan faces third, and you better hope there's a penalty. As Levis is sacked again! Jamichael Humphreys! I think he's been hungry to get on the field. This is some of the first action he's gotten all year. He appeared in one game earlier this season, only played a handful of snaps. And look at the impact he's already been able to make in this game. Short field for Buffalo now, and Pacheco starts this drive. He's going to keep again in a foot race to the outside, picks up the first down and lost the ball. Central Michigan has it. Just when things were looking so good for us. Another big turnover. First committed today by Buffalo. Labis going up top. It's a jump ball and coming down with it is Chris Parker. Down to the 29 and now a screen for DeWitt who gets the first down and enters the red zone. Trying to retake the lead. Central Michigan running this one into the end zone untouched. Back on top here in the third quarter. Buffalo has motion. That's Austin Harris. First and 10. Flag down. It's Sperling who doesn't get much. And the flag is going to knock them back further. That's the second holding call today against Kevin Kajust. Second down and 16 to go. Gray throws a dart across the middle. And it's grabbed by Quinton Pollard for the first down. You can really count on him in a big spot. They'll run it now, and Sperling attempts to turn the corner and does successfully getting first down yardage. Averaging four yards a carry now, and here's Gray across the middle. Another accurate ball to Nick McMillan. Making their way towards field goal range. Third down, they'll try to run for it and come up short, but they're going to go for it fourth and one. It's a full yard to go, and they're going to run again as Sperling does get the first down narrowly. To the air, though, on first down. It's Harris on the screen as he attacks that first down marker and gets very close. This time, Buffalo's going to go empty, and Gray going for it all again. Can hook up with Harris. They're taking their chances, though. Ball staying out of harm's way. And now Dingle's going to get the conversion. So a fresh set of downs as they go into the red zone. And more motion. This time it goes to McMillan. He's got some blocking. Looking for the edge. He gains six. Buffalo facing third down. They motion out Sperling. And that's Harris for the first down. They just throw him a timing route this time. He makes his fifth reception. Handoff. Sperling. That's a touchdown. And for only the second time this year, Lamar Sperling has a rushing touchdown. As Buffalo ties the game. Now can the defense keep this tied and get the football back? There's no deep safety. DeWitt is taken down by Ziegler. Sets up third down. A full two to go. They throw the screen. That's covered up perfectly. And Buffalo forces a very quick three and out sequence. And awaiting the punt is Nick McMillan. He'll have to fair catch this one. Bulls at the 27. Can they go and grab this lead now? Five and a half to go. Flag down. That was kind of an ugly play. And it's going to be another holding on Chadwick, the right tackle who's collected quite a few of those this season. Second and 16, pressure, and Gray is sacked. McLeod ends up making the play, and it's a third and 22. Not trying to do too much, and they lose yardage even doing that. So that's a wasted opportunity. And now a short field for Central Michigan. Another well-read screen. That will lose a couple. Already seen a couple three and outs here in a row. Central Michigan third and 12. Tyler DeWitt picking up a block and he gets the first down on the screen. 
We forgot about the running back. Now he's taken down for a loss by Wesley Williams. 2.36 to go. Pass over the middle is complete. Even with the hit. Brings up third down. Four-man rush. Pass out quickly behind the receiver and broken up. And that's going to get the defense off the field. We'll see. 50 yards here is going to be tough. And the kick is good. Central Michigan leads 27-24. Less than two minutes to go for Gunner Gray. Buffalo still in search of that fourth victory. It's off the hands now of Harris, who's had an up and down day. Second and 10. Gray steps up and gets flattened. He's sacked by Pace, and it's third and 15. Pressure coming again. Gray sets and fires to McMillan. Got him in single coverage. That is a huge conversion. And they go with tempo now. A minute 20 left to play. That is caught by Morrow. Little dangerous on that pass. About a minute left. Dumped, caught. It's Sperling. Not quite at the marker. And it sets up fourth down. Now lining up under center. Leon Dingle gets the conversion. And Buffalo burns that first time out. And they're at their own 48 now, 43 seconds on the clock as Gray leaves the pocket, has some room. He's going to scramble and get the first down. He's knocked out of bounds at the 36. They're near field goal range now. Gray protected. He's going to take a shot. He has a receiver open. It's caught. It's Chance Morrow. And the go-ahead touchdown is secured. Buffalo has taken the lead with 31 seconds remaining. The defenders just collide a little bit. That disrupts the coverage, lets Morrow have a wide open chance. And Gunner Gray puts the ball right on him. 31-27. They just have to hold on now. Starting at the 18. It's a throw outside. Not much on it, though. That's going to be even a loss of one. Why are they not using a timeout? 10 seconds left. Maybe a gain of three. Two timeouts left. Nine seconds for Central Michigan. They need six. Labis loads up. He's got one on one, but it's knocked down by Charles McCarthrins. And there's only one play remaining. Clock hits zero. Lab is throwing. It is out of bounds. And the game is over. Buffalo has win number four with a last minute comeback. Engineered by Gunner Gray and Chance Morrow. I'm aware there haven't been many wins in the series, but that is one of the most satisfying. We won the turnover battle. We hit the big plays like I said I wanted to today, but I felt like we were able to take chances without them being incredibly risky chances. It's probably a very different game if not for the snow, but both quarterbacks had their misses today. Both ended up killing possessions because of those misses, but we got much better throughout the game at stopping the run. After the first few drives, I don't think their running game was even, what I would say, good. Ours wasn't very good, but that's been the story all year. And we just had options still to attack through the air. Even though I felt like in this game, it was incredibly tough to just see. The visual clutter of the snow did not make it easy. So I'm shocked there weren't at least one or two interceptions from us in this game. Wide receiver Sean Prochet has joined the recruiting class and your Mac Defensive Player of the Week is Jamichael Humphreys. You'll notice that Prochet joined the recruiting class and Graham Tangelo did not. Ultimately losing the game in which he visited cost us this battle. That stings because I really wanted to get Graham Tangelo. I felt like he could be a future star at linebacker. He's already a rangy guy that can tackle. I felt like he'd develop into a three-down player. 
But it's just not easy here as a zero-star school, especially when you lose those critical games where prospects are visiting. We still have an overall strong recruiting class right now with seven three-star players and still more that are close. Alfonso Magnifico should probably commit after our next week. It's getting close now for Logan Klink scale. We're going to boost the points there to hopefully hold off UNLV, but they have a week 15 visit with him. We're going to be pitching Brenton Lampman now with the hard sell and bump that up to 65 points. I really hope next year we can be a one-star team again and have a few more hours to play around with in recruiting. Is four wins going to be enough? I'm not sure. But there is only one game remaining now on the season, which means only one game remaining for Gunnar Gray. Just like with CJ Ogbonna last year, I've really enjoyed playing with him. I wish I had more than one season to do so. But we're probably going to see new quarterbacks all the way until Season 4 in the series. Coming out of this game, I felt pretty good about the chances of Harris and Kajust continuing to make an impact for us. But the breakout player today is absolutely Jamichael Humphreys. The very first snap I put him into the game because we weren't getting much pass rush. He ends up getting half sack and a forced fumble. Gets another sack later. It took him 18 snaps to take home the MAC Defensive Player of the Week award. What a way to make your entrance. He is absolutely getting more playing time in our final game. And we're also going to have Kajust Harris out there. Now, Eric Pacheco has reached his four games this year, which I guess in this menu, I have to like reapply the red shirt. He's still eligible, but after the fourth game, it like took the red shirt off there. So I guess after game 12, I need to come back in here and make sure everybody's red shirted that I want and is eligible. But our finale is going to be against eight win Bowling Green. So I don't know how likely it is that we're going to come away with a win here, but if we do not, we'll have started the series with two years, never winning back-to-back -back games. That's on the line in game 12. Thank you all for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was one of my favorite games so far of the Dynasty. One game left and an off-season coming your way next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. There's much more Buffalo Dynasty on the way. And I'll see you all next time.